Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm reviewing the retro classic Cannon Fodder. Cannon Fodder is a war themed top down point and click action game developed by Sensible Software. The game was initially released in 1993 for the Commodore Amiga and PC DOS. Subsequent versions followed on the Sega Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, and several other platforms. The game features 24 missions with up to 6 levels per mission. Each mission takes place in different locations such as jungles, deserts, arctic landscapes with different terrain and objectives. These objectives range from killing all the enemy troops or destroying buildings etc. The levels feature explosive traps, deadly quicksand and large bodies of water that are very dangerous to cross because while in the deep waters your squad can't fire their weapons as normal. Your squad starts out with two men but will go up in number as you get more recruits and do different missions. So what is cannon fodder like to play? Well the game features a permadeath system where one shot or explosion will kill your soldiers. Once they die, that's it. A gravestone will appear on the main hill in the menu and one of your new recruits will take the place of the dead soldier. So it's a pretty ruthless and unforgiving game in that regard. But to help with this you can split your squad to create scouting parties or you can just send one man off to do the best John Rambo impression he can. The game is mouse controlled with the left mouse button to move and the right to fire. You can also use special weapons such as grenades or missiles with mouse button combinations. All your troops have standard issue guns with unlimited ammo. You can also find explosive supplies around the map but they will explode if shot so you've got to be careful. You've got grenades, bazookas and later on in the game you'll get access to vehicles like skidoos, tanks etc. All your soldiers have names and after each completed mission you get to see how many kills they've racked up. If they survive the mission they get promoted up the ranks, if they die they get their own grave on the hill where all of your new recruits are lined up. The enemy soldiers start out pretty useless, after a few missions they become a lot more dangerous though. There are basic infantry troops, rocket launcher troops, grenade wielding ones, you know, and they're a real pain because one explosion potentially could wipe out your entire squad. And when you reach the later levels you'll have to deal with enemy vehicles like tanks which greatly increase the challenge. One other hazard are the enemy buildings where their troops come from. These buildings you need to destroy or the troops just keep coming and when you blow them up the roof flies off in a random direction and if it lands on your team they will die. So overall you just really got to be careful. It's very challenging, very addictive, enjoyable. It's a really good war game and it really captures the essence of war. Once you progress to the later levels, the hill where all your recruits are lined up becomes a war memorial with graves, poppies of all your fallen comrades. It's a very powerful image and the developers were definitely trying to portray some type of message about war and the loss that comes with it. Graphically for a 27 year old game it still looks pretty good to be honest. It may be a bit pixelated yes but you can clearly see the troops, you can clearly see everything, it's well defined and it's functional. The levels look nice and varied, the soldiers they're reminiscent of characters from Sensible Soccer which was another game the developers made. So overall it looks, still looks good in my opinion. The music is classic retro stuff and the mission ending tunes and the other tracks will burn into your mind. As soon as I booted up this game, after all these years I immediately remembered the music. The sound effects of the guns are good, the death cries of the enemies are hilarious and the environmental ambience is sparse but it works. Ok so what's good and what's bad, what's good? The game has a simple premise, easy to learn controls and enjoyable gameplay. Despite being 27 years old this game still feels fresh and fun. The levels are varied and challenging, the game is very addictive, the way your soldiers rise at the ranks after each mission is satisfying and the memorial hill covered in gravestones and poppies is a very powerful image. What's bad? The difficulty increase is a little sudden as things start out pretty easy but suddenly the game becomes rock hard. Maybe a more steady progression system of difficulty would have been better but this is a retro game so that's just how things were back then. Ok so what's the verdict? When Can of Fodder originally came out in 1993 it was an instant classic. It wasn't like any other game I'd played and the controls, the interesting and challenging levels and the whole package was just a brilliant piece of work by sensible software. Some games you know they age badly but the classics, the games that really set the standards they never age and Can of Fodder definitely falls into that category. Even after all this time the game still feels fresh, the game is very addictive, it's easy to pick up and play but it's very hard to master. The permadeath feature makes each soldier have more value and it's such a satisfying experience to watch your troops rise the ranks and become veterans. 
but eventually they're all going to die because that's what cannon fodder is about. It's a war game that's fun and doesn't take itself too seriously but underneath the humour the game has a powerful message about war. And you know I just love this game, I remember being a kid, going home from school, play cannon fodder for hours and just like I just remember just vividly remember so much enjoyment like it really brings all those memories back and it's still good it's still an enjoyable experience even after all this time so my score for cannon fodder is 9 out of 10 it's a retro classic and one I'd strongly recommend you check out if you're looking to purchase a copy I'll put a link in the description where you can pick one up okay that was the review thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe also, if there are any other retro games you'd like to see reviews for, just drop a comment with a suggestion because all the suggestions are welcome because I'm trying to think of old ones that I could do as well. Thank you, this is Photography Gamer signing off. Have a good one. Cheers.